Hello guys, welcome back in this new video. In today's video, I want to tell you how good is native music production on Linux and if you can actually switch to Linux for music production or not. So the answer is yes. If you want, you can switch to Linux for music production, but there are some caveats and I'm going to explain you what those caveats are. So there are two ways of producing music on Linux. The first one is using a native DAW like Bitwig or like Studio One, although it's still in beta, or Hardware or LMMS. I think uh, it's called like that. And there are also other those, of course, but you know, the big ones are these ones that I told you about, and those are all native. And Bitwig, for example, works perfectly. They have supported the Linux since day one. They are on Flathub, as you can see, it's officially supported by them. And the cool thing about Bitwig that I really, really appreciate a lot is that they actually support Linux in a good way. Like as you saw, we have an official flat pack from them with more than 130,000 downloads, which is crazy. And here on Linux, you can have more information here. And I wanted to show you this because that's how you port your software to Linux. That's how you port it in the right way. Installing Bitwig Studio on Linux via Flatpak. So here, as you can see, they tell you everything about Flatpak and they tell you that Flatpak have permissions and they have adjusted the permissions by default. But if you want to adjust the permissions even more, you can use a flat seal. And if you click on here, it will open the Flathub page of flat seal. So this is extremely, extremely cool because they are actually porting their DAW to Linux in the right way. And here they explain you the limitations of the flat pack and also which is i mean it's not really a bad limitation it is a limitation but it's not really that bad because you can just have the plugins in a folder so it doesn't really matter like here as you can see i created a folder in my documents with the plugins and instead of installing them in my system i just have the version of the plugin here and that's it. Like it's even easier than installing them. If I want to delete them, I don't have to search for the plugins in like the user lib folder. I can just have it here and say, okay, I don't want this plugin anymore. Boom. I click the delete key and it's deleted. So it's even easier actually. And Bitwig also uses Pipewire, which is the modern audio stack for Linux. And they give you a brief explanation of what Pipewire is. And also they link you the official Pipewire website. So this is an amazingly cool DAW. They have ported the Bitwig to Linux in the right way. And the Bitwig to me is an amazingly good DAW. I am starting to learn it because I was interested in trying actually a native Linux DAW. And Bitwig seems to be the best option for now, unless you want to use hardware, of course. And it's good that they've ported the DAW to Linux in the right way, both using Flatpak and Pipewire. And if you don't want to use Flatpak, they still have a like, deb package of the DAW. And also it's available in the Arch repos, although I don't know if it's them putting it in their Arch repos, if it's like a third party person putting it into the Arch repos. So I'd rather use the Flatpak, honestly. And as you can see, it works absolutely perfectly. I've started learning it recently because as I've said, I wanted to learn a DAW that is actually native on Linux just to see what the experience is and I've used native Linux plugins as you can see this one right here Uhe they have absolutely amazing Linux support and yeah I've just made this bit this is like my second bit that I've made on this coming from FL Studio it was a bit different but it's actually way better than FL Studio And the native Linux plugins, they work perfectly, except for the Clap plugins. So I'm using VST3 plugins right now, they are native to Linux. The Clap plugins, for some reason, they make uh, the audio thing crash here. And so then I have to just reboot the application. So I don't really know why they're pretty buggy. But the VST2s and the VST3s, they work perfectly on Linux. So that's what I'm using right now. And if you want to find the native Linux plugins, there are a lot of resources online. I'm going to link them in the description. So we have these websites that has a couple of plugins that are native on Linux. So I'm going to link these in the description if you want to search a little bit of them. But there are web better websites than these, so let's get into them. Then we have these websites, which is called Audio Plugins for Free. And this gives you a lot of other Linux native plugins that you can download for free, I guess. And then we have this website, which is called linuxdo.org. And here you have 700, around, yeah, 700 plugins that are all native to Linux. They're not all free, as you can see, some are paid, some are free, some are open source. So, you know, it's, it's a huge collection of Linux native plugins that you can check out. 
and maybe find cool plugins that you're going to use. And then we have this other website, which is good. It gives you a lot of Linux native plugins, but if you want to search more, like you can go to page two, they want you to log in. And then we have this other website, which is called freevsts.com, and we have a Linux section. So these are all plugins that are available natively on Linux. So this is another website that you can use to look for native Linux plugins. Let's start with some actually cool plugins, which is LSP, which stands for Linux Studio Plugins. This is a collection of open source plugins compatible with Linux and also these other formats right here. And basically this is a gigantic collection for Linux and it is just an amazing collection. Like it has installed like hundreds and hundreds of plugins for free. For example, here I can see all the plugins. Look at how many plugins it has installed. Like all of these plugins come from this collection here. LSP and this is free you can install it uh, you can click on unload install it and use them on Bitwig and they work perfectly like look at how many plugins I have here and basically these should cover like 90 95 percent of all the plugins that you had on macOS and on Windows and it is an amazing project overall then we have the Tonelib plugins they all have Linux support we have the free trials and the freeware so if you want to try them for free you can install some of the freeware plugins and they all have a Linux version and it works really good. Then we also have Vital, which is a nice plugin. I'm starting to use it. I'm using the free version. This plugin has a Linux version. And then we have the Uhe plugins. These all have Linux versions, as you can see here. And they are all absolutely amazing. Like they just, they don't just have Linux support. They have probably the best Linux support of everything. Because if you want to install them, you install, for example, I've installed the Tyrell N6 plugin. And here I've extracted it and I have the Tyrell folder. And we have this install.sh script that you can double click and you can click on yes to agree to the license terms and it will install the plugin. And I've added the plugin on Bitwig here and it actually added automatically the .clap folder and the .vs3 brief folder and the plugin works amazingly, you know? And as you can see, as you can hear, it works absolutely amazingly and it's an amazing plugin and the Uhe has probably the best Linux support out of everything. And also I forgot to mention that here on Bitwig, everything works out of the box. It recognizes my MIDI uh, keyboard out of the box. I have an Arturia keyboard and it also recognizes my PreSonus sound card out of the box. So everything just worked out of the box with Bitwig. And also you have the Linux Musicians Forum, which might be a unhelpful place to be if you want to produce music on Linux. I'm going to link all of these websites that I've showcased to you in the description of this video. And the second way to produce on Linux is to use Windows DOS. For example, I've installed FL Studio. You can also use Ableton, Reaper. I guess Reaper is not available on Linux. I don't remember. So you can use the Windows DOS on Linux. And for example, for FL Studio, it works pretty good. I've heard the same with Ableton. Ableton should work pretty fine with Wine. I mean, there are some caveats, okay? Because Wine is not perfect. It has a couple of bugs. When it comes to FL Studio, they are not like deal breaker bugs. Like as you can see, the mixer is, is it's like glitchy, but it's only like a graphical glitch that you don't even have always. You only have it when you like make the mixer longer. So it's not really something that makes you say, oh no, I can't produce on Linux because of the mixer <laughs> being glitched. But like the mixer itself works well, like everything works well on FL Studio on Linux. So we just have this graphical glitch right here, but it's not a deal breaker, like you can just still use the mixer. And uh, we have uh, another glitch here when we want to scroll the BPM value. If you have the taskbar on the bottom, for some reason it will interfere with the mouse cursor and it will not make you be able to scroll for the BPM. But the solution is just to right click on it and type value manually. So yeah, it's a bit annoying, but it's not really a deal breaker, at least for me. And that's pretty much all the bugs that you would have with running FL Studio on Linux through Wine. Now, there are some other caveats, which like VSTs will not always work. Now, Wine is getting pretty good at a very, very fast pace. And so I'd say like most VSTs should work. I've also made a tutorial on how to fix them on my second channel which is my beat making channel. And I'd say most VSTs will work, like the VSTs that I've used on Windows, 95% of them work uh, on Linux and at around like 50 to 60% work out of the box. So I had to fix a couple of them by installing like DXVK with Wine Tricks and some other packages with Wine Tricks. But after installing them, 
they, they get fixed and they work so then we get from like 60% plugin working out of the box to 95% of the plugins working so yeah for the most part you can do this method this method is of course harder it, this method requires tinkering which uh, bitwig uh, doesn't require any tinkering but this does require some tinkering so if you're okay with this then you can use fl studio with wine and i am okay with this so in fact i've used fl studio with wine for like more than a year and i've been able to produce and sell beats this way so it's definitely doable it just requires some tinkering and not everybody is okay with that some people just want things to work out of the box so in this case uh, bitwig is probably the better alternative which is the native alternative but the caveat with the native uh, linux DOS is that the plugins of course are less there are way less plugins now there are a couple of projects like yabridge and Carla, but these projects, although they are very cool and they are meant to integrate Windows plugins on Linux native DAW using Wine, these projects have some issues. Both of them do not support uh, Flatpak, so basically I've tried to install Yabridge with the Bitwig Flatpak and it doesn't work. And also Yabridge does not work with the newer version of Wine, so you have to downgrade to Wine 9.21. And this is a huge deal for me, I want to have the newer Wine version and so I'm not willing to do that. And so for me Yabridge and Carla are not an option. But if you use the native DAW from like the repos or like the deb file if you don't use the Flatpak of Bitwig and if you're willing to downgrade Wine to 9.21, then yes, you can integrate uh, most Windows plugins on uh, a native Linux DAW with the average. Although that requires some tinkering, so that makes everything more difficult. It's not super hard, but at the same time, it does require some tinkering. So yeah, that's pretty much the situation that we have on Linux right now. We can use the native DAWs with less plugins, or we can use the Windows DAWs with more plugins, but also more tinkering and a couple of bugs here and there. So this is the situation that we have on Linux. And for me, it's completely fine. I'm completely fine using less plugins and just using the Linux native plugins and mastering those. But I'm also completely fine using the Windows DAW. So in fact, right now I'm going to use both of them. I want to both use Bitwig running natively on Linux and FL Studio running with wine on linux so this is where we're at right now on linux the situation is improving we're getting more native plugins on linux we're getting more those natively on linux as i said studio one is being ported just recently like one year ago and it's still in beta phase so not all features are there there might be some bugs but we're starting to see movement into the linux porting of the those and of the plugins and so that was it for today's video if it helped please like and subscribe because it really helps the channel grow a lot and i'm going to see you in the next video have a nice day